Hello and welcome to day three of MAGFAST 2021, the final day. As always, we are here for Make Benefit of Glorious Charity Child's Play, which helps out hundreds of children's hospitals and domestic abuse shelters around the world, and yeah, truly a charity that is the reason we keep coming back year after year. Uh, if you've been with us all weekend, welcome back. You've seen some truly wonderful, entertaining, hilarious, and ridiculous runs throughout the whole weekend. If you are just joining us for the first time, uh, where have you been all weekend? Um, just as a quick recap, our original goal was $2,500. We blew through that on day one, anchored by a large donation from Gwen. Day two, we passed our stretch goal of $5,000 due to a late donation train during the randomized run of a Link to the Past. And so today we have our super duper secret stretch Armstrong totally planned ahead of time goal of $7,500. Uh, can we make it? We shall see. There's a final day lineup that can pull that train into the station. It is this one. Before I get to all that, we just have uh, one last donation goal to meet. It is for the uh, the last game of the, the weekend, the Hollow Knight. We have one last boss to get in there. Can it be a truly random run if everything is not on the table? I do not think so. So let's get this extra boss fight uh, uh, donation goal next. There is also one new poll for the day. It is for the Earthbound Run coming up a little bit later. And it is a bid war for the final party member. Give it a look, toss your donations, make a selection. Crash coming up a little bit later, we have Cortex a run of Link's Awakening, Dragon Mark for Death, the Messenger, to begin. wrapping up with Earthbound and the Hollow Knight Run. Leading off today, though, is a super fun game that I love. It is being run by Stump, and it is Crash Bandicoot 2, Cortex Strikes Back. So lead us off, Stump. All right. Thanks. Uh, oh, hello. I'm Stump, and uh, I'll be doing Crash 2 100%. So uh, time for this uh, starts when I uh, gain control the, in the warp room. So if you're uh, ready, I will... Uh, uh, select a new game from the menu and uh, count down to when that moment is. So uh, I'm going to crash bandicoot. Yep, this uh, going then. Vortex strikes back. All right. So uh, yeah, first we got to skip this little opening uh, scene here. And three, two, one, start time. So. Uh, We'll start with the second level here, Snowgo, and yeah, we'll start to see some uh, tricks already. Uh, sliding next to that TNT will explode it without uh, hurting me, and that also blows up the box next to it. A uh, nice, quick start to the level, and then sliding around uh, that patch of ice that has all those boxes on it is uh, actually one of the few uh, things in this run that's a little bit more annoying to do on the uh, version of the game that I'm using, which is the uh, uh, the PAL version, because there are uh, multiple things about it that uh, make that the best uh, way to do that, but uh, better uh, well, more favorable movement possibilities, uh, larger hitboxes on certain attacks, and uh, other things of that sort. And earlier I did a uh, jump to get that red gem. I did that by doing a high jump and spinning right as I was doing that. That causes the jump to go a little bit higher and enough to get that red gem that's just out of reach. So I do not need to come back in here through the alternate entrance to get that. And I can complete this whole level in uh, one pass. 
So because this is 100%, I do need to get the uh, box gem for every level as well. And so uh, there are often some tricks to uh, break some arrangements of boxes faster too. But uh, what we're going to do now is not break any boxes at all because that is what you have to do to get the blue gem out of this level. And uh, the colored gems that I uh, am getting unlock some side paths on some other levels that either have other gems on them or have boxes. And which are needed for the box gem for each level. And I still need to get the crystal for every level as well to gain access to more of the game. But what I am uh, doing throughout the, my movement along the ground here is the neutral slide spin. And what I do there is I slide along the ground and let go of the directional pad and then spin. And that causes me to continue moving at slide speed. Uh, but the slide cooldown to still be running, which is what prevents me from uh, doing repeated slides to stay at the at slide speed. But now that we have the blue gem, I death warp to go back to the beginning, and now I am going to go through the level again, but breaking all the boxes this time to get the box gem. Because when you get a collectible item in a level, it remains with you even if you uh, uh, even if you death warp. So there's this little side path here that I had to body slam a thing to get to. And then these purple birds, I can jump and try and land behind them and then spin to extend my hitbox backwards and get bumped a little bit forward from them to get a little tiny boost. Uh, that is the uh, right number of boxes that I want to have at the end of this. And then uh, some, uh, most of the levels with a uh, regular movement type have a uh, bonus section here. Uh, just having some extra boxes, but those do count towards the box gem, so we do have to do them. And in a couple of levels later in the run, there are some uh, special things, uh, ways that we take advantage of some properties of entering and exiting bonus areas to either reset some timers that we otherwise could not uh, make while still getting all the boxes, or much later to duplicate some boxes and avoid an, a very annoying backtrack. But that is Turtle Woods. So now... Now we have Crash Dash, and this time I have some uh, boulders rolling after me to run away from. So this is about knowing where the pits are so that you can do fast movement all uh, around them. I got a little caught on the edge of the doorway into there, but I was trying to neutral slide spin through there. and. Because that is continuous movement that, with proper timing, will cause that little animation of Crash rolling forward as if just barely getting away from the boulder to not happen. And that saves some time. Now, there's no Nitro switch in this level, so I need to hang back a little bit there and make sure that the boulder breaks those Nitros on screen. Now we have this to do, and we have some suspended boxes here. So I can land on those by spinning through there, and then slide jump to... Well, I took an unexpected bounce there, so I need to... 
do bouncing on these to get them to actually break and not let me fall and not let me fall into the pit. So, uh, oh, gotta get all of those before that starts. Otherwise, oh, well, there was a checkpoint right there, so the boulder would roll over me, and then I would be right there to break the boxes that time. Because unlike in Crash 1, you don't have to do a, uh, the box gem all in uh, one life. And then you have these sets of boxes that normally you would just barely be able to get, but with the extra speed from the neutral slide spin, there's plenty of uh, leeway to get them. So here's a level that has a second gem in it, but this one is different from the others because this one is from getting to the end of that level before that timer that just appeared on the screen runs out. Now of course we'll be making it to the end in plenty of time. But we have this side path unlocked by the blue gem. And that would take too much time to do and still get the uh, timer gem here. So we are going to leave that for another pass through the level. You may have noticed that after that last checkpoint, I stopped breaking boxes, including the uh, that last checkpoint there. So there's our timer, and then we will death warp and complete the box gem. Now the TNTs, when they explode due to going far enough off screen, they don't blow up other boxes by proximity, but by uh, hard-coded lists of uh, what they should break. So that's why the bouncy box that was high up in the air at the beginning of the bonus there still was blown up by the TNT, even though the TNT was on the ground. And then here we have this little side path. Mainly just a uh, water section, but with some uh, but with some boxes that need to be filled in by hitting this uh, switch here. Uh, I ended up stuck in a little uh, corner of the of the level geometry on the side there. Also, for those ramps that have three boxes at their uh, in the air in front of them, I need to hit the ramps with one of these speed boosts to get enough distance to break the third box. So that's why I used I uh, hung back a little bit for that first one so that it would be ready for uh, me to do the boost again for the second one. So now that we have gotten through that, we can do the last remaining part of the main part of the level. Just this last little water section here. And there isn't much to that. A few boxes leading up to this. Oh, and 74 is the correct number. It wasn't until Crash 3 that they started showing what the total number of boxes available is before the actual end of the level.
And our last level in this first warp room is this one's the pits, and this one is the, well, the first one with a sort of, with a branching path in the sort of mainline map of the level. And we can bounce on that bird and have that TNT blow up all the boxes around it. So what we're going to do here, there's a nicely sized gap on the right side between this pair of boxes here and the next box after it. So we're going to grab those and then we're going to do the left side. And another reason that we do this is that the left side also contains a switch that spawns some boxes on the right side. So we would need to go back onto the right side after hitting that switch. And there it is. And here again, we're trying to just clear the birds and then spin to extend our hitbox backwards and get knocked forward by them. So the two boxes on the right in this little thing, the ones I just broke, are the ones that are spawned in by the switch there. Oh. And then that checkpoint there. That is the uh, farthest back box on this side, other than those two that I uh, jumped in the beginning to initially break. So now we have both sides of this path cleared out. And with the uh, glitch high jump, you can escape from the pits that normally you would need to defeat some enemies in there to spawn a trampoline for getting out of there. And then this bonus area actually has quite a large number of boxes, but I'm going to bounce on these so that they will immediately break when I bounce back to them to get the boxes spawned in by this. But I'll bounce over that second one so that I can use it to get back. And... Now we only have a couple more of these pits, and then that will be the first five levels finished, so there will be the first boss fight. And this first boss fight is... is completely scripted. Uh, Ripperoo will do exactly the same thing every time, and I just have to wait in a suitable spot to deliver each hit, so... Uh, yeah, it would be a good time for reading any uh, donations that have come in. Well, we have one donation so far. It's for twenty dollars. It's from me. What it says is not important. I just wanted to get Bubble Monkey into the lead in the first uh, battle. That's what right. we expect. Nice. So I have to deliver three hits to Ripperoo here. And for each hit, there are two phases. First, the TNT phase. I can walk over them. I just can't be near them when they explode. And then the nitro phase. Those I can't uh, touch where they will instantaneously explode. But the uh, safe spots on each hit are the same every time. So I just have to know where to stand. I see that uh, there's a question in chat about the hardware I'm playing on. I am playing on a uh, PS2 with fast disk, uh, disk speed turned on for uh, faster loads. Oh, here's our third hit. So that is one boss defeated. Coming in from this is JC. Good luck on the run, Stump. Let's crush this new Magfast goal. Read. Off to a strong start. Right. Thanks for the donations. So we'll start this with uh, with Barrett. This is a bear level. There are uh, now let's say three and a quarter of these in the game. But uh, this one is the one that I 
I consider it to be the hardest because of a couple of arrangements of boxes. That one is an example. It's a little tricky to make sure that you start pushing back to the right early enough to go through that last box there. But there's an arrangement of boxes uh, near the end of this level that's a little bit more known for causing trouble. But because the bear moves me forward without me being able to stop or go back, I needed to death warp and try that section again to break all the boxes. But this middle section, there isn't really much to it. I'll be... And what I've been doing is doing a uh, boost and then jumping to keep some of the speed from that for a bit longer. And that'll help me get through the, these levels faster because, you know, because otherwise they're essentially auto-scrollers. One of the things about this is uh, the, some of the best death animations in the game actually... Oh, here's the troublesome set. Oh, I didn't pull far enough right for that second box, so I am going to need to go uh, and try and break those again. But yeah, the bear levels have some of the best death animations in the game. Of course, hopefully we will not be seeing very many of those because I, that means I would be losing time, but there we are. It's just a little thing that makes things going wrong in these levels not be so bad. We have Crash Crush. This is a boulder level. And there are some new things uh, about it that we'll be seeing after we do this first uh, chase section. And the new thing we have here is those electric barriers that I need to slide under. Now, Crash is a little bit taller while on the spin phase of the neutral slide spin than on the slide phase. So in this, uh, but in this level, the barriers there are placed at such a level that, okay, all of those did break, that uh, you aren't tall enough during the spin phase of that to actually hit it. So I can neutral slide spin under them as though they are not there at all. Now, we needed to make sure that those nitros broke on screen because this level does not have a nitro switch. And I'll need to do the same for this, so I gotta hang back and make sure that I see all of those break. And then we have this area here, and this is one of the first spots where I'm going to break a stack of boxes by sliding off an edge onto them. There are a few spots, mainly in bonus areas, where you can do that. That's a nice way to break a lot of boxes very quickly. And then with the right alignment, neutral slide spin through that, uh, through that little building will spread out to break all of those boxes in there. And then this area, we have a large number of these uh, speed boost pads so that I can take the time to do the necessary body slam to break that box that had that extra uh, metal stuff around it on the back left of those uh, last four. But without being able to get even farther ahead of that boulder through neutral slide spin, you... Uh, just barely have enough time to get all of those broken before the boulder catches up to you. So now we have the eel deal. This is the first sewer level. 
And you occasionally have these uh, sections of water where there's an eel electrifying them on a timer, and you take damage if you're in there when that happens. But uh, that may seem like there's no, no real purpose to the back of this room with it just being full of nitros, but that's because that back portion is not solid. Now, I want to bounce off of that nitro because the animation for getting hit by it is uh, you can keep moving onward straight from it and we'll grab the green gem there and uh, death warp back because we still get to keep it. Yeah, we still do need to hop back in there to get that first box that's right next to these nitros because in these earlier games, hitting the nitro switch doesn't also break boxes that are right next to the nitros. And we got another stack of boxes that we can slide right through. One of the things that the PAL version has is a slightly larger body slam hitbox. One that's large enough that I can break all four columns of those boxes with a uh, well-placed body slam like you saw there. So that saves some time dealing with stacks of boxes that have a bunch of those uh, body slam ones in them. And then on this final section, we got this grid that Crash moves across with his hands. Uh, you move a lot faster across these when you have third mask form. But that interferes with movement in, uh, well, in, like, along the ground. So that's why we haven't been getting, uh, that's why we've been avoiding third mass form. But uh, there's a spot in the fourth warp room where it does benefit us to get it, so hopefully I will be, uh, it will be possible for me to do that. So now there's Snowbiz. This is... Now this one has a side path that's unlocked by the uh, red gem. And that side path, yeah, there's quite a lot to it, but it's actually probably one of my favorite side paths in the game. Now these, uh, the porcupines, normally if you walk up to them, they get their spikes extended by the time you reach them, so you can't attack them until you wait for them to finish moving around. But with the neutral side spin, you get there before the spikes are extended, so you can go straight through and just defeat them. There we got that. And the box count is right, so those TNTs did break everything they're supposed to. all of those. Now the crushing things here act a little bit faster than the ones in the main part of the level, so you're intended to need to slide under them, but we're neutral slide spinning anyway, so uh, we already have enough speed for that. And that should get us to 77 boxes, and it does. Yeah, 
Yeah, sometimes those boxes uh, don't like to line up with your jumps. That was going to hit me if I didn't stop for a little bit right there. Now we got a bonus here with a lot of ice in it. And here's another place where we're going to slide right next to a TNT to instantaneously blow it up without getting hurt by it. correct number, so we will have the box gem for this too. And that is Snowbiz. And we have a $10 donation from 1LPHD, I hope I said that right, saying, I love Crash, my childhood, great to see this game. Very nice. So this level will be a little bit different from uh, any of the others because I am actually not going to be getting the box gem in this. This is the only level that we actually have to enter and do something non-trivial in uh, more than once. And the reason for that is that you need to enter this level through its alternate entrance to be able to get the box gem. But the entrance to that is in the third warp room. So instead, we'll get the death route gem here. Now, for that platform to be there, I had to get to where it was without losing a life in the level leading up to that. Oh. Uh. Well, I already reached the platform there, so it will uh, so it will still be there even though I died in the main part of the level there. But I actually got the checkpoint there, which I wasn't supposed to, so I after I get the gem here, I will need to re-enter the level to get the to get the uh, secret exit. There we are. So the gem for finishing this is here, and to death warp back into the beginning of the level, we can actually clip through a non-solid part of... I just remembered I did not want to do that because I got a checkpoint that I wasn't supposed to. But there are some non-solid portions of the scenery in there that you can get through and uh, fall into the water to get back there. That's probably, at this point, probably faster for me to exit the level through its exit. So that nitro there is something you normally never, ever, ever see in 100%. So because I did break that checkpoint, I do need to go back in here to get the secret exit. Now, I don't, if it wasn't for the secret exits counting towards the 100%, I would not need to get this because what this unlocks is the alternate entrance to Snowgo, which is the intended way to get the red gem, but we already got that through the uh, glitch high jump. Yeah. 
and that secret exit is here. But I do need to get back to the regular warp room, so I do need to enter that and then exit the level. But that gives us 10 crystals, so we are now ready for the second boss, and that will be the Komodo Brothers. And during this fight, you may notice some of the parts of it, like the knife throwing, going a little bit slower than you might be used to. And that is... And that is because I am on the uh, PAL version of the game. Some things uh, like this were uh, slowed down accordingly for the frame rate, but the other uh, benefits that it has outweigh things like this. So for the second phase, I'll hop out here to manipulate this bounce and then be ready to spin the one brother into the other to deliver that second hit. completed warp rooms. Well, except for the box gem and air crash. So this level, this level has uh, an alternate entrance that you normally need to unlock from the warp room after this that has some boxes on it, but thanks to the glitch high jump, we can backtrack into it. And there's a TNT buried in there that will break that whole stack of boxes. 32 is the correct number. And now we can keep going through the main part of the level. I'm going to intentionally take a hit here so that I don't get uh, invincibility from that, or I'll let the TNT blow it up that works too. So here's the platform to the death route of this level, and there is a clear gem on that, but we aren't going to be doing that. Because... Oh, I made it over there first try, but unfortunately, it's occasionally possible for if you land in just the right way, or wrong way as the case may be, to end up inside the platform and then you can't get out. This is something that is more prone to happening on the uh, PAL version due to the uh, lower frame rate. So there's more move, uh, movement distance per frame to possibly skip collision with uh, the top of the platform. Let's see if we can get over this time and not embed in the platform. Whoop. Sometimes the game can be a little bit weird about whether it wants to let you jump out of a slide. But there we are. Yeah, we didn't make it back, but we still but the gem still counts. Uh, 
Uh, that's a very uh, tricky jump to do, and sometimes I have trouble with it. Now we have the bonus area of this, and there's this wide gap that normally I would need to do a chain of those switch boxes there to uh, spawn the platform for, but with a slide jump and some zigzagging, you don't need to do that. You can get right over and bounce on the box that's right before the falling platform, and uh, there you go. And then that nitro switch only breaks those uh, those four nitros that are in the uh, alternate entrance area there. So that's a bit of a hint that there is something more to the level. And now plant food is another river level. This one also has a timer gem, but that one is the yellow gem. Ooh, I went through the edge of that. <laughs> The timer for the timer gem actually uh, resets when you respawn at the beginning of a level, so I didn't lose any time on that timer for, uh, for that, so that won't prevent me from getting the yellow gem. This might, though. So I believe that that timer should still be running in the background, even though it isn't showing. But even though we lost some time on it, we can use a side effect of the bonus area to reset it. to do that actually. So doing that and respawning in the main part of the level to then attempt the bonus again should have reset the timer that is invisibly running for whether the, I can get the yellow gem at the end of this. clear out this little path here and then get that checkpoint so that when I uh, respawn there to get the box gem instead I don't have to go down that right path again because it will only let you get one uh, gem each time you reach the end of the level. So the yellow gem should be here. I guess it must not have continued running the timer when I respawned at that checkpoint. I also didn't get that other checkpoint. Oh my. Uh, well, I jumped right into that. I know I oh, can't get the yellow 
gem in this pass through the level, I should have grabbed that checkpoint on my way in. I will... I will get it this time. Alright, that's better. I was going to say, well, that transition was going on. We have one anonymous donation for $10. Hollow Knight boss fight, folks. Let's make this weekend last as long as possible. I do have to grab the yellow gem here because we need it for the next level. Since this happens, and it's I. It's been. I, I'm sorry about this, but it's been so rare that I. Uh, for me to die in that section, that I just haven't really internalized how that influences the mechanics of the timer for this. right through that without going forward and pre-killing the flowers there. And there's what we were trying to do. Thanks to chat for believing in this. So now that we have that, we can do sewer or later. One new thing introduced here is these lab assistants with the, the blow torches. Uh, they have quite a wide area of effect, so I'm going to be using a good amount of masks to get past them. So here we have the yellow gem path. There are no boxes on it, only the clear gem here that's near the beginning of it, so we can grab it and death warp back out and do the main part of the level. Now there are some rapidly spinning fans coming up. after we do the bonus here.
Now, the boxes that are spawned by that aren't wooden, so they don't count towards getting all of the boxes. So we can just do a, a glitch high jump to skip the need for that. But here we have these rapidly spinning fans. And if you position yourself just right, you can go through them without getting hit. And then we body slam sideways there for the to take advantage of the larger PAL body slam hitbox in that direction. And taking that hit there serves a couple purposes. One, it gets me through that without me having to wait for the uh, blowtorch attack to end. And the other is that it prevents that mask box there from giving me third mask form, which we do not want. Because it prevents the neutral slide spin from being as beneficial as it otherwise would be. But since I took uh, also took a hit that I did not intend to take there, I did need to wait for one of those two. Normally I would use both of those masks to skip the need to wait for those two. So the next level is unbearable. And when I said that there are three and a quarter bear levels, this is the quarter. Although, depending on what you consider bear level to actually mean, perhaps the whole thing is one, just uh, with larger bears that serve a different purpose. Now, this level does have a nitro switch, so we don't have to make sure that all of the nitros on the chasing sections get hit by the bear on screen. And also, we can get sort of ridiculously far ahead of the bears with the movement here. Now, there is a side path here. And it's faster to death warp to that checkpoint to uh, than to wait for the bear to get to that and break the pit open. Normally I bounce off that one and then body slam down through there, but I uh, ended up going completely over. to take a hit there to prevent this from giving me third mass form. And then the iframes from there will let me just walk right through here without having to worry about hitting the enemies. And we're back in the main part of the level. nitro switch that's a nice thing to have in here and then we have a couple of bear chases here that are a little bit more involved all those wooden barriers and electric barriers there now the electric barriers in this are a little bit lower than the ones in the uh, in the previous uh, boulder level you can slide under these ones but you're too tall during the spin phase of the neutral slide spin to uh, to get under them, so you do need to be sure you're on the sliding part. And this level has a secret exit.
And this leads to one of the two remaining bear levels, which actually will be the next two levels that we do. But this and uh, Totally Fly, which we unlock from the next work room, are two uh, levels that are locked in their entirety behind the secret work room. So those are ones that you only see in this category. And even of the three others that are alternate entrances to other levels, you only actually need one of them uh, for getting everything from the level that it goes to. But they still count as percentage, so we do still have to unlock all five of them. Now in this level, there are some of place, some places, and we've seen a couple of them so far, and there's one more a little bit later in the level, where there are four boxes right near the beginning of a long jump over a uh, an open water section there. You need to do a boosted jump to get through those and to get across those. And the last level in this warp room is Bear Down. And that's also the last bear level that we'll be doing. And even though it's the last one, it's the one that uh, I've always felt is the easiest. You don't have to deal with the darkness. You don't have to deal with the unfavorable box arrangements in the first bear level. Everything's just there. If there are more donations, this would be a good time for them. but I will go over some of the goals that are still left to be met. We still have one extra boss fight in Hollow Knight later. The Forgotten Champion is about $250 for being, for being unlocked. And the final poll for the weekend is the Earthbound Final Party Member Bid War. And Bubble Monkey is currently in the lead, but we still have uh, the third strongest blind man, the dog, Buzz Buzz, and Hope to be in contention donate and see who is going to win the final party. Alright, so there's the end of the bear area, and then we have this secret exit right here. And since that one's so clearly, uh, a suspicious thing to check out. I believe that's, and it goes to the first portal here. I believe that that must be the way that you're intended to discover that there is a secret warp room. But we're going into the alternate entrance to air crash here. Since this goes through a warp to the rest of the level rather than a uh, an intended to be uncrossable gap, this is the only alternate entrance you actually have to go into and play the level from in the run. And that puts us into the main part of the level, but with a large number of boxes, including all of the nitros broken.
I see a chat question about nitros early. But what that does, that simply is uh, cleared the level of all nitros. It's just hidden along the alternate entrance there. And since we can get the Vax Gem, and that's actually the thing that I, uh, the only reason we have to revisit it, uh, that's why we didn't do the bonus the first time through and wait until now for it. Now, you're intended to jump across these platforms and then break these, but you can damage boost off of those mines there if you have a uh, mask to spare and uh, break them while on your uh, board here. Whoop, that was a... Uh... Although not having a mask for this does mean you gotta be really careful of where the mines are when you're doing those uh, ramp jumps over the fences. But there's our box gem. So with that, we have now gotten everything that there is in the first three warp rooms, so it's time for the third boss, Tiny. And this is probably the place where there is the largest impact of RNG on this run. There are these nine platforms. Eventually, three of them are going to fall. They're randomly determined. And hopefully, they'll be positioned such that I can have Tiny be jumping on one that's about to fall. And then in this phase, only two of them will drop. So it becomes less and less likely. Last phase, will only have one uh, that it'll be in the exact right spot. Oh, we got a good pattern here. So this last phase is where the trouble is. Because if I'm not, if the platform that it decides to cause to drop is a corner, then I pretty much need to have Tiny be going onto that right as it's falling because otherwise, it's very dangerous to jump across a corner in a way that will cause Tiny to go onto it and fall. Ooh, that is not a nice... Sideways, not diagonally? Okay. Well, this will work at least. So hopefully we get something that we can use on this phase. A side platform works. And then there's also only one platform that stays up, going down from three in the first phase, two in the second. But that's tiny. So the first level that we do in the fourth work room is going to be Ruination. This is another, this is another style, well, one in the style of Road to Ruin, and reuses a lot of the same uh, box arrangements, but with some nitros added to them. And there is also a green gem path there. Uh, well. Oh. At least there's the checkpoint right there. So these are nitros, but we don't need to spawn them in because the nitro switch will still detonate them even if they're not spawned. So this is the green jump path. We don't actually need the green gem to get in there. I got in with a, a glitch high jump, but 
we do still need the green gem for other things, including the percentage that it counts as. Also, I did not learn that you could spin those logs away until I started watching runs of this. So when I was casually playing and casually 100%ing this, uh, when I was uh, younger, I had so much trouble with any of those sections that had those uh, bouncing log areas. So here is another place where we use the larger PAL body slam hitbox to the fullest. And then we can bounce off the TNTs and body slam. Oh! Hey. My thumb slid onto the up, uh, up button, so I ended up misaligned with that. But, you know, this is... There aren't that many levels that have more boxes in their bonus than outside of it. But this is one of them. spot where we can spin through boxes and then slide on the ones below them to do a slightly faster clear of boxes that are suspended in the air. And the travel of this platform is just long enough for all of the boxes there to count down and be added into my box count. This will become very relevant in a couple of levels from now. Uh, on this section, I uh, uh, I have the level that where I actually do want to get the third mass uh, invincibility for him uh, in my route right after this. So I would really like to show how uh, well that works. So uh, I didn't really want to take any chances that would uh, cause me not to exit this level with two masks. But that's ruination. So there is one mass box in this level, and that is the one that we do want to get the third mass form from, so I need to get to it without losing either of these. There's this first little section here that has a couple of boxes on it. I think I can squeeze in there. And here we go. So there's this little thing here. And I watch my box count there to make sure that that whole thing really does explode. But when you have third mask form, you move so much faster along these. And you don't have to worry about the cycles on the... Uh, floating spike things. So you get through that nice and quickly. Oh, 
Oh, I. Well, I. I was not prepared for that last box to still have that many bounces left in it. <laughs> now, there's a reason that I am taking those hits, and that is because there is a secret exit to this level as well, but we need to get the box gem first, and then we can death warp back to it. By pressing R1 or circle when you're on these, you can pull your uh, legs up, and this is the only time where that's relevant. And this unlocks the uh, the second extra level. This is Totally Fly. This is one of the two Firefly levels where... Oh, I thought I wasn't going to make that because that ended up being a no-momentum jump. Interesting. But the level's dark. You need to bring these uh, Fireflies with you to see. And they're timed so that if you had continuous uh, movement of just ordinary walking, then each one lasts just until you would get to the next one. So the overlap, the amount of time after I reach the next one where I would still have the first one is a nice way to visualize the time that is saved by using the neutral uh, slide spin. Wow. And that also applies to the bonus area. Although here, the Firefly is actually on a, uh, well, is moving on its own. And I can, I can get across that with a, a glitch high jump. And then the, it's not very hard to feel your way across the last couple of platforms there and break the boxes that are on that final platform and make sure that you end with 16. And now here's the tricky part now. There are six of these body slam boxes and it takes quite a bit of time to body slam them and the firefly that's there would run out. So you need to go ahead and pre-break some of them if you're going to have it last long enough to get you across that last set of pits there. on level name versus description as totally fine. Yeah, sure. <laughs> anyway, when I said that the uh, 
that it would become relevant a couple levels from now that uh, that the journey of that bonus platform in Ruination took just long enough for everything to count down into the uh, into my total box count. This is where it becomes relevant. So I'm not going to do this bonus area quite yet. That's better. There is a death route here. Very carefully avoid breaking that checkpoint. So now that we have taken this platform, it will not despawn if we then uh, die in the main part of the level. So now let's go back and do the bonus. Oh, I was afraid I embedded there. So we got those TNTs, we gotta make sure those blow everything up. Can't forget the box that was slightly off screen off the top there. I learned that the hard way the first time I ever played this game. And there are a lot of boxes in here. So they're gonna take a while to count in. So let's Death Warp while they're still counting in. And we're at the beginning of the level with 72 boxes. So we duplicated all of the boxes outside of the bonus that we had broken uh, up to that point. Although those boxes will go away if we die and respawn at the beginning of the level again. So we're not completely safe with that until we hit a checkpoint. Luckily there is one right here. So now that we have the box duplication locked in, duplicating those boxes removes the need for a very annoying backtrack in this level. But we needed to respawn all the way at the beginning for this to cause enough boxes to be duplicated to be useful. And we can just go right through the death route. Okay, 122 is the right number there. Also, we don't have to slow down and grab those two boxes up there because that's just... Uh, it's, a, it's annoying to have to slow down and line yourself up for those. And we don't need to hit that uh, switch there and go back and grab the things that respawned earlier in that route. Nor do we need to then exit the beginning of the route and do the section of the main line of the level that got bypassed. We actually have one box more than we normally would have now. So we need to leave one box unbroken there so that we do end up at the correct total of 155. Because only if the total is exactly right does the game actually give you the box gem. This is a level that adds some new mechanics. And there's one that we are going to use a lot to avoid being hit by the exploding fruit that's spit by those plants. I'm going to let that mask box be blown up by those nitros so I don't get third mask form.
And that is that there are a bunch of things, and the exploding fruit there being one, that cannot hit you if you're spinning. So if I do a jump and I'm landing where one of those is about to explode, a well-timed spin will cause that not to be a problem. That is the correct number of boxes. Now there's a death route here that has boxes on it. And there are also boxes on the part of the level that the death route would bypass. So we'll, this will be something similar to what we did for the right side of uh, level four, where I grab those boxes that are at the beginning, and then we'll backtrack into the end of it to get the rest of what's in there. And now we reach the bees. Now when you go past a beehive and while you're in the vicinity of it, A bee will come out of the hive and chase you, and uh, hopefully it won't catch up to you, but you can easily spin the bee away. There's another level where there are a lot more of the bees and they move a lot faster. But those still are not a problem. So now we're backtracking into the death row. There's the gem for completing it. Gotta watch out for the bee that's gonna be there because we are in a bee zone. And this checkpoint and three boxes behind that, that completes the boxes that are in that. So now we can go forward again and complete the rest of the level. A lot of the scenery edges there, especially along things like the paths that those uh, death route platforms move, you can actually walk on. So it's nice that they provide a way to bypass the need for those platforms in some cases. I'm trying to leave that alive for my death warp here because I really like the death animation that you get from this. And it's also nice and, uh, and fast. So there's a secret exit to this. And that's from body slamming that uh, plant there. But this unlocks an, uh, the alternate entrance to Road to Ruin, which we don't need. So instead of going into that, we're going to go into Totally Fly again, but then exit level. Because then that will put us back in the fourth warp room rather than the third, so we don't have to ride that elevator in the middle. And there is one level left in warp room four, and that is Behaving. This is where the bees will be much more numerous and much more speedy. And that darker colored ground that has, that also showed up in, uh, in the previous level, if you spin on it while you're standing or walking over it, you burrow under it. And that does protect you from the bees, but it's slow to do that. And Spinning doesn't actually burrow under it if you uh, if it's the spin of a neutral slide spin, so we can still neutral slide spin along it without being slowed down by burrowing under it. You also move fast enough to outrun the bees over the 
uh, distances that you need to do that. So, there's a staircase of nitros there. But they didn't seem to be hopping. There's something about them. Oh, I was not expecting that to be right there. But luckily, we have that checkpoint right there, so we can just... Uh, try and hop back again. So, those aren't actually nitros, they just warp you to this little side area that the purple gem is, for some reason, very early in. There's a lot more to this path than that, but there's n nothing you actually need to collect that's on the rest of it, so uh, we can just death warp uh, back out of it. Going across an island like that where there is one of the exploding fruit is one of those uh, times where you spin to use the spin invincibility to get uh, past it without being hit. section the bees are going to catch up to me. Hopefully one of them will go into the nitro switch, although they didn't, so I'm going to have to hit it, wait for the explosions to dissipate, and... Well then. Um... I'm just going to... Oh! It was just behind me. I was... Oh, I was really tempted to go back and see where it was, but I figured if it was unusually early in the level that that would use up more time than just going straight through again. crashes and upside to it. <laughs> I ended up a little bit past Oh, well, I had a mask, so that works. Oh, that must be the one that I missed. And hitting one of the bees into the nitro switch is what I was hoping I would be able to do the first time. Was it that final box there that was the one that I missed? Ooh. Well, that completes the fourth workroom, so 
now we have the second to last boss. This is Engine. And because uh, of four and five. All right, nine and five. So I need to get five into the right one. Oh, I did not quite get the last one into the left one though. So the left one is going to be healed a little bit. All right, now we have the shoulder phase. So if I line myself up to get a bunch in on the first attack there, that's one and three, then hopefully I can kill both of them at the same time. All right, both are now one hit away from death. All right, double shoulders at least, we got that. And then on this third phase, If you time it exactly right, you can get all five of the hits here on the uh, the first time he comes up. But it's a very risky thing to do. Also, firing the fruit there doesn't reset the uh, idle animation, so it's interesting to see Crash start to do that as the boss is dying. So we have our last five levels here. We have uh, two new types of levels. The first of which is the jetpack levels. So those despawn when you go past them, and those wires will shock you if you touch them, even through the insulation. enemies there's if you hit them and then you immediately uh, keep pushing forward you can go right past them without taking a hit from them that is specific to the pal version which is another uh, reason why that is what's used to do runs of this and there's another instance of that but there isn't really much more that's special in the rest of this level, so uh, there's time for a donation or two if there are some. Well, a coincidence, we happen to have two. A $5 donation for Sick and Crash. I wish I was as successful as this game's stump and enjoyable run so far. And a $50 donation from Fitzlacker saying, thank you Magfest for all you're doing. Hope it will be back next year. Thanks for the donations. It's a very nice cause that they're going to. Here's another new type of level. A level with these uh, uh, pistons and electrical enemies. But there's a gem path here that requires all five of the colored gems. And also we can 3D jump around the pistons. And those uh, particles which cause Crash to shrink to nothing and then die if they hit, 
spinning will actually break them. Ooh, barely made it under that. And then on this section of this, we have these lab assistants with the shields and their wonderful screams that they make when you push them into the pits. There are more places in these levels where we'll be seeing those. But now that we have that, we can do the main part of the level. And here we have a section of a bunch of things happening behind this pane of glass and needing to dodge nitros and such. But if we glitch high jump over that shield enemy, we can get on top of the glass and uh, just neutral side spin along that and bypass everything. That's the last place where we have to deal with suspended bouncy boxes. Now those enemies with uh, that uh, plasma ring ar around their uh, their neck, you're intended to need to slide into them, but sliding down from above works too. Then there's another level of this type here. And this one has a death route in it, which has boxes on it. But there are also some boxes in the main part of the level after it. So there is a little bit of a backtrack we'll need to end up doing from there. But because there's a death route involved, I need to get all of that done without any, uh, well, without dying. Uh, in my, uh, that's worked well when I, uh, in my practice run, so uh, hopefully it'll work just as well here. Uh, 3D jumps for the win. And having two masks here will be nice for survivability. box spawns those three that were not solid at the beginning of the uh, area here. Mm -hmm. 
Well, I... I was not expecting to have my slide go clean through that. Luckily I survived it. Alright, that's better. here. And now we have to go back to the death route. And that set of uh, uh, shrink rays is very tricky to get past, but we're where we need to go now. And we have another part that's behind glass, so we can bounce up onto the top of that and bypass that. It's really nice that there aren't any boxes that need to be broken behind either of the areas with uh, with the glass. So that it... So that going along the top of it is a thing that we can do. Getting up onto the top of it does rely on bouncing off the top of one of the shield enemies, which requires the glitch high jump, so I feel like that explains how that wasn't caught. <laughs> So this is the second uh, Firefly level, and this one has a death route. It has a couple of boxes at the end and a gem in the middle, but we can easily backtrack into the end to get the boxes. We just have to get the gem this way. boxes you need to break that are on top of a nitro, sometimes the game can act a little bit weird about it and have a phantom explosion of the box above it that does still hurt you like a nitro would, but thankfully that didn't happen there. And unlike the bonus in Totally Fly, this one has the uh, fireflies follow you after you hit them the way that they do in the main part of the level. Here's the end of 
on this part so we can backtrack into here to get the two boxes that are near the end there. And they were nice and didn't put any pits beyond the range of the last firefly on the right side. that there is only one more level left and that would be the other jetpack level but for the uh, beginning part of this uh, I don't really have much to say about that so uh, would be a good time if there are any more donations. And had any a few minutes, so I'm going to just go up and talk about the goals for future donations. Um, we still have the last Hollow Knight boss, less than two hundred dollars to get the Forgotten Champion worked into that round. And we still have the Earthbound final party member bid for early on the contest between the third strongest flying man, the dog, Bubble Monkey, Buzz Buzz, and Pokey Picky. Who do we like? I don't know. I prefer Bubble Monkey. Maybe most people don't. There's no way to tell unless you get those donations in. So donate it's for a good cause this afternoon. Let's make it happen. This really is a nice class. I'd love to see that gold map. <laughs> and we finished that level with the pal specific skip of those uh, floating enemies there. And that should be our final gem. Now, just to make sure that this really is going to be 100%, I am going to make sure I have 97% right now. And we do. So that means that beating Cortex here is going to finish this. So I have to hit Cortex three times, and the third hit will be time. This is probably the most anticlimactic final boss fight in the whole Crash series. There's two hits, and ready on time, and time! No! You haven't seen the last of me, Crash Bandicoot! Crash, what do you suppose happened to Cortex? So that and is Crash 2 100%. It's still up there. And on finishing that, we have a $50 donation from Like a Box saying, Hi, Stump. <laughs> Hi. Hey. Well, uh, I forgot how crazy some of those PS early PS games really could be. So they're is the like, real 100% ending uh, cutscene that's a possibility after these credits, but since I'm so close to the estimate, if we need to move on, I'm fine not doing that. We've always got a couple of minutes for a cutscene here. Alright. I mean, unless it takes like 10 minutes to go through the credits, but I thought that. I'm eager to see it. Let's put it that way. All right. It's been a long time since I've seen a crash. Thank God. That was uh, that was fun. That was fun. 
Yeah, I, uh, I enjoyed doing it, although I do wish that some of the levels had gone better. Like you said, it wouldn't be a marathon uh, if something like that doesn't happen. Yeah. I don't think I had ever uh, fallen off that one platform in the Ruination bonus before. Did you hear that, everybody? A first time for everything. Let's donate and hit that up just for to mark the occasion. <laughs> because we might never see that again. It just seemed like such a one-off. Might never, literally might never happen. We might have witnessed history, never to be repeated. All right, that's the end of those credits, so it's time for that 100% cutscene. Couldn't time to use the there. power of the gems to destroy Cortex's space station. Like to do the <laughs> honest. <laughs> right, and that oh, really yeah. is Crash Two One Hundred Percent. Thanks very much for watching the run, and good to see all those donations during it too. I'd really love to see that goal met, but uh, well, that'll be all for me. Uh, good luck to all the remaining runners, and uh, if you uh, enjoyed seeing this run, uh, I run this, uh, Spyro Games, and uh, uh, and I do some uh, Super Metroid and uh, Link to the Past randos, uh, and some other things on my channel, which is uh, twitch.tv slash stump230. So uh, with that, I'll uh, leave things for the uh, for setting up the next runner. Thanks very much for uh, having me do this. All right. Thanks so much, Stump. Remember, follow him, Stump230. Uh, coming up real soon, we have Legend of Zelda Link's Awakening run by Phantom Matt. We will see you all in a few minutes.